Hello, good afternoon and welcome to Tele Isla's news with the most important news of the day. After the request of young people on the island to be included in the voting for youth councils, by unanimous vote, the National Electoral Council, CNE, in full chamber, considered that the elections for youth councils scheduled for next November 28th may also be held on the island. In a plenary session and unanimously, it was considered that the elections for the youth councils scheduled for next November 28th may also be held in the archipelago. This was decided by the National Electoral Council after the disagreement of the landers and local authorities of the department and after attending the request by the Presidential Advisor for Youth, Juan Sebastián Arango, regarding the law that regulates the skull and that excludes the archipelago from participating in this important process since it's limited only to the municipalities. Likewise, taking into account the progress of this democratic process, the CNE requests the National Civil Registry to issue a special electoral aid calendar which guarantees the effective exercise of the fundamental rights to political participation of young people in this important region of the country since they did not have enough time to make their registration because the deadline for this period was set for August 20th of 2021. The 29th of August is a national day against noise. For this reason, the environmental corporation Coralina yesterday was in the sector of New Guinea in an awareness campaign seeking to demonstrate the damage caused by noise on health, as well as provide tools to generate other ways to listen to music. As a tool to raise awareness among the island population about the importance of not listening and not emitting high volume sounds because of how harmful they can be to human health and the environment, the Environmental Corporation conducted a workshop in the sector of New Guinea as they received complaints of noise pollution in different sectors of the island. The Corporation Environmental Engineer gave an assessment of the outcome of the workshop. It is a work that is being developed by several secretaries in order to establish which are the points of noise on the island of San Andres. We know that this is a problem that is being presented on the island due to the issue of the loudspeakers and pickups in the island. But the idea is to try to solve this problem and to do something as a society regarding this issue in order to reduce the noise levels that are being presented on the island. During this session, hearing tests were conducted on the inhabitants of the sector to determine if there were any damage done to their hearing due to the noise that they were generated on different occasions. This is an activity that is developed in conjunction with the entities of the island, National Police, Ministry of Health and Government, and is expected to continue in other sectors of the island where this problem is ongoing. And after the Attorney General's office reported that the PPS located around the Rugby Transitory Center, it is currently overcrowded. The first criminal judge of the islands other the transfer of these prisoners. The first criminal judge of the circuit of the island ordered the National Penitentiary and Prison Institute to transfer to a place of confinement the persons deprived of liberty who are in the overcrowded conditions in the transitory detention center around Iraq. In ruling on a petition for a protection filed by the 85th Judicial Criminal Prosecutor's Office of San Andres, in the development of its intervention function, the judge protected the fundamental rights to life, health, human dignity, integrity, and freedom from cruel and inhuman treatment of the people who are in the penitentiary. In his decision, the judicial officer ordered the government of San Andres, Providence, and Keklina to take the necessary actions to adapt or change the building where the transitory detention center operates so that its facilities comply with the required conditions of space and distance, and this provide the necessary guarantees to avoid overcrowding of the person deprived of liberty who are there. It also requests the governor's office to provide the essential elements of hygiene for this population, as well as to determine it and implement the prevention, care, and treatment route to prevent the spread of COVID-19. The court indicated that within 48 hours, a working group must be set up with the participation of authorities related to the prison issue and the attorney's general office, the purpose of which will be to periodically monitor compliance with the orders issued in this ruling. Finally, the judge granted a period of three months for both the departmental administration and IMPEC to comply with the orders issue, given the transgression of the fundamental rights of the people in this place. It should be clarified that this refers to those deprived of liberty who are in the transitory center located around Iraq and not those who are in the New Hope prison on the island. 
And in other news, an inhabitant of Lux Bay sectored in off before the cameras after Lay's last news, his perception about the state of the road in this sector. The inhabitant of the sector manifests that the holes in the road of the sector are presented due to the recurrent pass of trucks that transit in the place. In this street, in this sector, right now, we are going through a big problem, taking into account that all the vet oil trucks fill up here and then, as you can see them, come in and go out. They fill up water and they have this street turned into a mess. They don't do any social work like filling back the road or something. So this street is always damaged. Today, they are not around here because they have given us water. Regarding the length of time that the situation has been going on, the citizen says. This has been going on for years. The year before last, they put it in a filler and so on. But every time it rains or every time the truck pass, the same thing happens, but they don't care or do anything socially responsible to be able to get in and out without any problem. Tele Isla's news journalistic team will be attentive to the development of this news. And during this weekend, there was Hella Beach cleanup activity led by Foundation Natura. Here is the assessment of this event. Almost one ton of waste was collected at a beach in San Luis during the cleanup activity, whose slogan was let turn waste into resources. It was a day that had citizen participation, but it was very important because it was interinstitutional and we must recognize the merits of the Navy, Air Force, Red Cross, Secretariat of Tourism and Coralina, for which they united around a problem that is very evident on the island. The total waste is close to a ton in all. There were more than 900 tons of waste that are divided between usable and unusable. A portion of this collected waste will be no use as biomass. Eso tiene dos utilidades, básicamente. Una se va para biomasa. This has two utilities. Basically, one goes to biomass and the other part, which is reusable, goes to those initiatives which are pushing to take the waste out of the island for commercial purposes. Therefore, the idea is to give sustainability to these businesses. For that reason, Natura has started to support these recyclers in order to make waste management much easier. The invitation to the community is to continue recycling at home and also to use the trash containers in the correct way this helping to take care of the archipelago environment. And yesterday, the residents of the fourth stage of Guinea carried out a day of cleaning on the drains in the area. The president of the Community Action Board gave her opinion. La Brigada de Limpieza del Canal de Desagües. The cleaning brigade of the drainage channel was carried out yesterday in the company of the community with the objective of mitigating the flooding problem we have in our community while the pluvial sewerage system is implemented. Young people, members and dignitaries of the community action board were those who participated in the cleaning brigade with which it's also expected to mitigate the flooding problem considering the rains that hit the island these days. And now let's learn about other events that are making news in our brief news sections of today. In a joint work, the Animal Heart Foundation and other entities managed to perform in the department 497 sterilizations to pets in the campaign that took place in the facilities of CSIP in San Luis. Likewise, the foundation rescued animals in terrible conditions such as abuse and neglect. With these actions, the Animal Care Foundations seek to reduce the rate of abandoned pets on the island. The National Police conducted in the department the strategy of attention to women, family, and gender, where actions of support were taken to promote the empowerment of women and prevent cases of gender-based violence. The Corporation for the Sustainable Development of the Archipelago of San Andres Coralina celebrated the National Day Against Noise, where they shared information about the prohibition of the use of pickup trucks to promote actions to raise awareness about the causes and effects of noise. And now we continue with the weather forecast. The weather forecast for today, August 30th, in the coastal area of Archipelago, the sky is mainly cloudy. 
Temperature is 29 degrees Celsius, winds from the northeast direction, with intensities of 23 km per hour. Humidity forecast is of 79% and probability of precipitation is of 85%.